John. Where are you, John? Over here, mate. <laughs> and uh, we're setting off past the Opera House, as you can see. Lord Howe Island, four days, hopefully beautiful downwind sailing all the way. No seasickness, gorgeous meals, and dolphins galore. Probably not, probably be vomiting and horrible, but anyway. Now, Stick Stringy is over here um, taking a photo or video of us. leaking into the bilge. Um, we've only been going for an hour, but we knew the leak was happening anyway. But, um, it was just doing, getting a bit more. So I cracked it down to the This is the stern, the, the rudder post. Actually, I've tightened those clamps, and uh, I think that's actually fixed it nearly. So we should, we'll wait and see what happens with the bilge. So the pull header and reef, yep. five and a half knots. Good, close to about five eight on average. Yeah, but worst point of style, one of those. Water and sea. Where do you want it? Behind that slug. Behind it? night um, and nice southerly winds to start us off so it was cruising along for a while uh, but it wasn't long before we had to uh, reef the bank reef the main again out to this 
second deep reef, which is the last reef the reef. Reef the head sod again. Still too much sail. We're consistently getting 35 to 45 knots apparent, so 50 knots about 2 metre seas. Between all that, me going up to the mast and, and all that, I'm cooking dinner as well. Just got dinner ready and I had to pull the main down from the second reef to the um, flash it down to the boom. So, anyway. Oh, we also had boats, cruise liner, and uh, some fishing boat and a freighter. morning. I just got up at 5.30 to relieve John and after he came on at 3. I had a bit of breakfast and uh, yeah, the sun's come up. with the tiller, helming by hand, and we're wing on wing. What's our heading? 060, 050. 060, 050, heading to look directly to Lord Howe. Six knots plus. Uh, we just put a preventer in for the boom and a, a spinnaker pole out on the on the uh, jib. Um, because the winds would you know, sort of roughly going the right direction, but we couldn't really utilise them as efficiently as we'd wanted to. Uh, anyway, so now we're on a run. It's working okay. Anyway, it's a beautiful day. The colour of water. Absolutely beautiful. No sea sickness. All's well. Yes, no sea sickness. John had a, was feeling pretty rough yesterday. So last night was uh, very wet. We had lightning storms to the southeast, quite heavy rain. Every, everything was wet. And, uh, we didn't uh, st spend much time in the cockpit. I came out to have a look at a couple of things and adjust the course, and that was about it. Go and lie back down. Every half an hour, got up and had a look around. John got some good sleep. And uh, as did I, so we're pretty refreshed today. And what do you reckon, John? We're about halfway there? Not quite. Not quite halfway. It feels like we've gone forever. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm going to give John a break. He's going to go and uh, uh, look, maintain the engine because it's been running. We were motor motoring for quite a while yesterday. about seven knots which is really really good this is the first time we've been able to sit back and enjoy the sailing running down wind like this since uh walking around the hole
scores from the north are big. Yeah, I know. So the wind built up and we couldn't run wing and wing. So we put a couple of reef. We were one reef in the main and the eddies down to about a half or less. And the wind is on, steering us. actually quite a nice morning and we motor sailed when the wind dropped off overnight um, so we could both get some sleep and now we're just enjoying a lovely breeze we'll sail up and we're just cruising We bloody made it. We just, I won't show you John because he's getting changed to have a swim in this glorious water. You can see the clear as, you don't even need to go snorkeling. You, a little, when we just pulled up on the mooring buoy, a little baby shark, little baby reef shark came up and said hello to see what was going on. Um, magnificent place, wow. Can't wait to get in the water. Um, it's not yet worth the hassle of the sail over, but I'm pretty sure it will be. Uh, today, it's been very windy, but like so windy we couldn't really use the, the uh, tender. Uh, with a little lap. So because of this uh
So I've been walking all the South Island for um, about four hours. And I've been using up all the room on my cards, just photographing, filming everything. I just, it's just the most spectacular island. Amazing. Um, if you had a proper camera, it'd be awesome. This is Ned's Beach down here where we're having a barbecue uh, uh, with the guys before most people, everyone heads back really. Sydney tomorrow, the next day, probably the next day because of the wind. I haven't been up to there to the big one, but I'm going to save that bucket list item for another time. It's an amazing island. It's very, very windy, but the bird life and the sea life, I mean, Ball's Pyramid's that way and I've decided that's it. I've got a probably more than climb the mountain I've got a go and dive balls pyramid from what I read the little I read about it. But I just wanted to get to know the island a bit. The vegetation, the bird life, the, the lagoon, uh, you know, it's just amazing amazing marine life the swimming with the fishes and the, 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 the snorkeling down there's just fantastic really good shallow snorkeling anyway I've just just been on this walk on my own just going oh look at that look at that look at that <laughs> it's just fantastic really really quality and just a crazy island like a crazy island this massive thing sticking up out of very very fucking deep volcanic plug and just the, the, the life on here is just amazing, amazing plug. really worth coming. Fucking knots that got me really in trouble in the end.
rush.
So after yesterday, which was horrendous, and last night wasn't uh, very nice either, and uh, Skipper John was a little green around the gills. That's an understatement. <laughs> Bloody howling winds that we had yesterday dropped off overnight. We had the motor, and now we've got a light breeze. And uh, things are a lot calmer, the seas have dropped right off. It's fairly pleasant. Yesterday and the d lull this morning, we're scooting along six knots plus. Um, and uh, building, yeah, it's like 25, 20, 25 knots. Hopefully, it'll stay there and not keep building. But seas are calm, flat, well, not calm, but flat ish. And um, hopefully, we'll have these conditions as much as possible. but yeah, it might die off. Anyway, should be a good night. There's still a few seabirds around. And it's clear as a bell, so we'll probably get moon and stars. It's 9 a.m. Saturday, and uh, I thought I'd just uh, report on how shit last night was. It's bloody horrible. Worst time of the trip for me. We had uh, actually started the night with a beautiful uh, uh, hour or two on deck listening to Xavier Rudd with my earphone, his iPod, and um, the stars are out and the boat was screaming along. It was actually really nice. And then what the wind kept bu building and building. What were we up to? I can't remember. About 38, 38 knots. Uh, had to eventually go to a double reef about bloody one o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Which is an adventure. Which I wanted to avoid, but we couldn't. And um, and you know we had to put a reef the heady a couple of times, and we we're steaming along like like the seas were just in a, like just so confused and frenzied. There was no you couldn't. Um, you couldn't predict which way the boat was going to move. Like normally, okay, you get a sense of like, okay, this boat moves this way, it's going to move that way, even if there's might be a little jump in the middle, but far out last night was just like, you. It, the only place was lying down, but you had to do stuff. So, you know, you just get smashed as you're trying to walk somewhere, you get picked up.
dead calm. We've been motoring for hours trying to get to Sydney, finish it up. The winds won't agree with us. Still. Nicer than five meter confused seas. Righto, there's North Head, South Head, there's John, <laughs> Roger, we made it back. Thanks, Skipper John. Yeah. <laughs> so thanks, what you... thanks for the crew and chef extraordinaire. <laughs> so what do you think about the trip actually, like the whole thing compared to other years you made uh, it and not made it? It was in some respects easier, but there's always a challenge in these things. Uh, we went had 48 knot winds on the first night. Uh, then we had uh, very rough seas and uh, currents and winds leaving the island on the way out. It's always a challenge, but uh, this one went very well indeed. Mm. Cool. Thanks for having me along, man. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> anyway, we're back. It's, uh, as you can see, I don't know if you can see, but sitting under there, it's just going dark soon. And, um, and we've got to get over down up the river to Dremoyne and um, try and get off this boat. Otherwise, we have to spend another bloody night on it. <laughs> anyway, we'll see how we go. Righto, so, um, wind vane. This is uh, Morning Birds wind vane, which uh, John said, previous owner named Carly, as in Carly Simon, you're so vain. So that's the song stuck in my head for about four hours. <laughs> um, to the point, how do wind vanes work? So, what you do basically is you just set your sails for your direction that you want to go in. You set your sails so that you're fairly well balanced, you're heading the right direction, and um, you then in grab the uh, main at the top of you, which is just a piece of plywood. We've, actually, we've just put on a larger one because the wind was a bit light. And this vane points into the wind and tips 
one side or the other. It's on a pendulum. There's a weight down the back there. And uh, it tips to one side or the other depending on whether the wind changes relative to the boat. So either the boat changes direction or the wind changes direction. And when it happens, that drives this uh, little push rod down here, down this tube. Push rod goes down the back and uh, turns that those gears, which basically is a, what you can maybe see down there is a blade in the water and it, it doesn't push the blade side to side, it turns the blade and because we're moving through the water that pushes the blade from one side to the other. That doesn't steer the boat, what that does is it turns this arm Lengthens and shortens the lines that lead forward through these blocks to the tiller, and it's attached to a chain onto a little um, thing in front of the underneath the tiller, which compensates for the wind moving one side or the other. But you know, this is how people sail around the world, right? You just set it up, so and it's been sailing for us for hours. Otherwise, we use the electric uh, tiller pilot. But this requires no electronics at all, nothing. It's stainless steel, so it'll last forever. So you just have to replace your lines occasionally and your uh, wind vanes, because they can get destroyed. Different sizes for different winds. And it's a bloody best invention since... Handy. When was it invented? 1960s uh, they started. 60s. So it's fairly recent, given... I mean, you could, Joshua Slocum, sail around the world and you just use your sails to, to steer your boat if you've got the right sort of boat and, you can, and you're good enough, but, um, but this is uh, slightly better than that. That's how it works.